and welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm Elena Casas. Our focus today is on the FTSE 100, and my guest is Marlies von Boven, Head of Global Investment Research at LSEG. Britain's FTSE 100 is dominated by old-school value giants in sectors like oil, mining and financials, cyclical stocks that typically do best in periods of economic growth. That means it hasn't thrived in the unusual environment of coronavirus. The index's biggest company right now is pandemic hero AstraZeneca, up over 20% this year. But the rest of the top 10 includes oil giants Royal Dutch Shell and BP, miners BHP and Rio Tinto, and big banks like HSBC, stocks that have looked unfashionable over the last 18 months. That means the index has gained 9% year to date. That's way below the 16% rise of the S&P 500 and the 13% gain of the tech-dominated Nasdaq. So why are FTSE 100 stocks failing to keep pace and can they regain ground? Let's ask Marlies von Boven, Head of Global Investment Research at LSEG. Marlies, hi. Thank you so much for coming in. So why have these stocks in the FTSE 100 done so badly, really, this year, comparably to other major global stocks? Is it Brexit or COVID or both? It's a bit of both. So the FTSE 100 has really structurally underperformed for the last two years relative to the US and Europe. And it's because of Brexit and COVID. So Brexit resulted in a revaluation of the, the index to as low as 10 forward PE. It has gone up to 12 forward PE, but it's still very cheap relative to the US trading at 22 and Europe at 16. So Brexit, of course, Europe was the largest trading partner of, of uh, the UK and the relationship is um, not as straightforward as it used to be. <laughs> no longer the free trade of people and, and uh, goods and uh, the costs have gone up. So that has one be one factor. Uh, second, when you look at the UK market, it's, as you already mentioned, it's very much focused on cyclical value. And they have, there's hardly any tech exposure. So it has been lagging, uh, in particular the US, with a very tech-focused and an increased concentration of the performance of tech stocks post-COVID. As we all have been working from home, uh, apart from some lucky people have been coming in. <laughs> um, so the, the world has changed and the FTSE has been left behind. So even Europe has a small tech exposure and has done uh, better uh, than the UK and the FTSE 100. You mentioned increasing costs for British-based companies. Of course, supply chains are a global problem at the moment. Yeah. Um, but are companies based in London particularly exposed to higher prices and therefore inflation? Uh, the FTSE 100 is very much global trade focused. So yes, they, they, they have had like a, a few issues. Uh, of course, the devaluation of the pound has been beneficial for export, but also has made uh, the cost of goods imported more expensive. The supply chain issue has been quite global. So we've seen the worst recession since the Second World War and the fastest recovery uh, on record. So this has led to this pent-up demand that suddenly uh, kind of came on the market uh, post-COVID when we were all locked, locked down and we, we couldn't spend uh, our money. Has led to supply chain issues, has led to labor shortages and even uh, raw material issues. So the production lines are longer. Uh, shipping costs have become, I think it's like about 14 times relative to pre-pandemic and much longer. Um, it takes much longer for the, the ships to arrive, so th there are many issues. The question is, are, is this kind of spur in inflation, is it transitory and due to the uh, sudden increase in demand and once that kind of eases out, will inflation kind of get back to more uh, normal levels or is it here to stay? So, And how do you think the Bank of England is going to answer that question? Where do you expect them to move? I think the Bank of England has a very difficult task at hand because there, there, there are many things happening. So, of course, we have uh, we had a rise in COVID cases which have eased off, but we're, we're moving into winter and we don't know if a new variant is going to cause issues again. Uh, so that remains a worry. Uh, then second, the, the furlough schemes have come to an end, um, which may impact consumer confidence. But at the same time, we see soaring fuel prices, soaring food prices, still supply chain issues. 
um, putting inflationary pressures, but the worry is that growth will fade a little bit, so growth will go slow down with high inflation. So that's a very complex uh, path to navigate and to decide when to raise interest rates and, and start to slow down the, the quantitative easing. So if the Bank of England moves too quickly, could that be bad news for big FTSE blue chips? Um, I, I, I think it, it, it could be if the economic the kind of global economic growth starts to slow down. So if the Bank of England and uh, the Fed start raising rates, and if this would impair growth, then that's an issue for the FTSE 100 companies. Also, the sterling could go up. So the um, the, the, the earnings that they, the, there's a lot of offshore earnings, and the earnings growth could also slow down of these global co conglomerates. And you mentioned when we started that a lot of these big companies are undervalued compared to their global competitors. Yeah. So where is their value to be found in particular, do you think? So we have seen recently, the, in September was quite an interesting month, we suddenly saw a sharp rise in yields and in inflation. And um, this typically, uh, it, it was a little bit too sharp to, to see a proper rotation into uh, value away from quality momentum, so away from tech. But the, the, the hardest hit sector was tech. So the US underperformed relative to the UK uh, for, for a change, both negative, but they, they relatively uh, performed. So we could see uh, if yields keep uh, firming up, their value has to catch up to play because it has uh, it sees some earnings upgrades and it's so cheap relative to the the growthy uh, segment of the market. The UK is very well placed to benefit from that, and also um, financials could do well if the yields uh, uh, back up because they, they the profitability will increase of the banks and the UK is very well positioned with a very large financial sector. Some bright spots there for the future of the FTSE. <laughs> Thanks so much for that, Marlies von Boven, Head of Global Investment Research at LSEG. Before I go, let's take a look at some of the other stories moving the FTSE 100. Business growth across Europe remained strong last month, but elevated inflationary pressures have put a dent in demand on the one hand, while supply issues constrain activity. That's according to PMI numbers out from IHS Market today. In the UK, companies hiked their prices at the fastest rate on record as the energy crisis and staff shortages hit the economy and push up inflation. And Prime Minister Boris Johnson said this morning only 127 foreign tanker drivers have applied to come to the UK under the scheme announced last week to tackle the shortage by offering 5,000 short-term visas. This as military personnel were seen driving oil tankers to cope with the supply crisis. Johnson said businesses need to kick a dependence on cheap foreign labour, but denied higher prices could lead to an inflationary spiral. Uh, I want to see that, that wage growth continue and I want, to see, I want to see productivity continue to grow as well. And what I don't think would be a good idea, Dan, when you, we talk about the, some of the supply chain issues, what I don't think would be a good idea would be to, to go backwards to the kind of uh, low wage, low investment, uh, low skill approach okay. that we've had before. And finally, as the Conservative Party conference in Manchester was picketed by pig farmers who say the labour shortage could force them to cull 100,000 pigs, the CEO of fast food chain Greggs has told Reuters Britain will not run out of sausage rolls. But Roger Whiteside said the supply chain crisis is affecting different products every day and some customers have had to accept an alternative to their favourite savoury treats. And that's your roundup of the outlook for the FTSE 100. I'm Elena Casas, and this is Reuters.